guys, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank, working with Marine Depot. So today we're gonna do 10 common beginner saltwater aquarium questions. This isn't like the top 10 saltwater beginner questions. These are just 10 questions that my blogger Max and I get frequently. So we figured to kick off our 51 weeks, I, I think it's 51 weeks, to kick off our 51 weeks of the Ultimate Beginner series, we'll start with some of the basic questions. I also realize that I have been working with Marine Depot now for about a year and I just wanted to say thanks to Marine Depot. I've worked with some great people with Steven, with Manny. They've been super supportive and have just, I don't know, they've just been super great. So thank you Marine Depot. It's been a fantastic year. This new series, Max and I have been working on this. I'm doing the video portion and Max is doing the blog portion. This is basically our attempt at the ultimate beginner series. Not just like a single video that's 30 minutes long, which I have, or a single video that's 10 minutes long, which I have, or a series of 10 videos. We wanted to go super in depth for the complete beginner. We put out newsletters with every new video that goes out. So if you just go to myfirstfishtank.com and click on subscribe, you'll be signed up for our newsletters. So you'll get an alert whenever this new video and blog comes out. We're gonna put out one video every single Friday at Marine Depot and at My First Fish Tank for the entire year, for the entirety of 2021. Let it be known that this is gonna be a beginner ultimate guide. This isn't an intermediate or an advanced ultimate guide. It's for those true beginners out there who don't really know anything about the hobby. So is it gonna be simplistic at times? Absolutely, absolutely but that's the point. So go ahead and set an alert every single Friday, 9 a.m. You can watch it at Marine Depot. You can watch it at My First Fish Tank and then head to myfirstfishtank.com forward slash start dash here, start here. There'll also be a link on the homepage itself. And as we upload those videos, you can have an opportunity to see the blogs that Max have done. And the blogs will have similar information but much more detail and links to all the various products we're gonna be talking about. With that being said, let's get started with question number one. Are saltwater aquariums more difficult than freshwater aquariums? I mean, if you were comparing a simple freshwater system to a simple saltwater system, then yes, it is more difficult because you have salt. So you have one more step. But honestly, a simple freshwater system and a simple saltwater system, once you get the gist of it, are really both pretty much the same. I wouldn't say that a saltwater system is much more difficult. In fact, you can do an extremely difficult freshwater system. When most people think of freshwater tanks, they're thinking of a simple betta fish tank, you know, or, you know, some sort of neon tetras in a tank in a bowl, right? But that's probably not the best way to go about a freshwater system. Freshwater systems need good filtration. Freshwater systems need good heating. The same is true on the saltwater side. Saltwater systems need good filtration and they need good lighting and good heating and all that stuff. So if a beginner was to do a freshwater system right, it would be very, very similar to doing a saltwater system right. And in fact, you can have saltwater systems that are just as complex, if not even more complex than a saltwater system. I'm talking about high-end planted tanks with CO2 dosing and all sorts of unique plants in there. It's, it's out of this world and I've never done it because I'm so intimidated by it. So are saltwater aquariums more difficult than freshwater aquariums? It's a yes and a no. Question number two, I don't have very much money. Can I still set up a saltwater aquarium? Yes, absolutely. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there that talk about budget saltwater aquariums. And when we're talking budget saltwater aquariums, we're talking like under $300. And if you're really thrifty, you can often get used equipment that you can just clean yourself and save a ton of money. Can saltwater systems be extremely expensive? Absolutely, absolutely. Let's just look back here, right? Here's my Fluval reef tank. This system here with the aquarium, the stand, these lights, the wave maker, the heater, the auto top off, the dosing pumps. I I'm gonna say it's $1,500. Okay, that's an expensive tank. This tank over here, the Reef Octopus Lux 90, these lights are 550. This tank and this stand cost about $2,000. So total here, I'm probably looking at 
$3,500. But you don't need to spend that much to have a successful saltwater aquarium. You can get a small 10 or 20 gallon tank. You can build something from Petco or PetSmart and easily have success for under $300. I don't have much money. Can I still get a saltwater aquarium? Absolutely, absolutely you can. And you could do what I did with my first aquarium. I ended up going with a high-end aquarium for my first setup, but I just bought it over a period of six months. So if you have a goal in mind and you want something bigger and slightly nicer, then just save up with each paycheck and buy a piece at a time. And in six months, you'll have a beautiful tank. Question number three, how do I clean and sterilize old equipment or old tanks? This is a really good question because if you are a beginner and you want to save money, there's nothing wrong with buying secondhand aquarium or secondhand heaters or secondhand pumps. But oftentimes when you buy these, they're going to be super gunky and nasty. And who knows, maybe there's parasites and stuff in there as well. So how do you clean it? Well, the easiest way to clean it is number one, rinse everything out. Rinse it really well. Then just add standard white vinegar or citric acid. These are both readily available. So what I do every time I change out a tank, I will rinse it out once, then I'll fill it up and I'll just pour in a ton, like one of those Costco sized things of vinegar. And I'll just pour it in there, let it sit for a few hours, three, four, five. The longer you let it sit, the more it will attack the calcium and the algae, and then you can clean it up really, really easy. Just make sure when you're done with that process that you give everything a really good rinse. If you wanna be really, really sure that there's no bacteria or anything in there, after you rinse it, after you give it the vinegar bath, you can fill everything back up and just put in a small amount of bleach. Obviously, wear goggles, wear protective equipment, and let that equipment soak in that bleach for a little while. Then, obviously, drain it out, and then rinse it out really well, and then before you use it, let all of that equipment die, because the bleach is no longer dangerous once it's dry. So as long as you let all of your equipment dry, both inside and outside, you have a completely sterilized system. Question number four, what equipment is essential for a saltwater aquarium? Most of the equipment we use in the hobby is not essential. The absolute essentials for a successful saltwater aquarium, obviously you have to have a tank, you have to have some sort of filter, some sort of light, some sort of heater, and salt. <laughs> really, you don't need fancy things to have a successful aquarium. Is there a lot of fancy and expensive equipment in this hobby? Absolutely, absolutely, but you can start out inexpensively with very, very little and still find success. Question number five, how much time does it take each week? A small, simple saltwater aquarium, something 10 to 50 gallons, is only gonna take you a couple hours a week. There's not a lot that needs to be done once your tank is up and going. Generally, your weekly tasks are gonna be things like keeping the glass clean, algae scraping, checking on your livestock, doing some water testing, and then the biggest thing you're gonna do on a weekly basis, which not everyone does, you don't have to, is doing some sort of water change. And that's probably the most time consuming part, depending on how fast you are and how much you've done it before and how far you have to take the water, but taking some of that water out and then refilling it can take a little while. So I would say if you're getting something small, like either really one of these tanks right here, you're looking at two to five hours Per week. It can be a lot more than that, right? Depending on what kind of equipment you have, depending on if you're dealing with issues. For example, in this tank right now, I'm dealing with green hair algae. So after I make this video, I'm going to be going in here for probably 30 minutes to an hour and picking off that hair algae. So you will find problems, but most of the time, you're looking at two to three hours a week. There are occasional tasks you have to do like once a year or once, you know, every six months. Things like removing the calcium buildup from your pumps. Just things that will give your equipment longevity and those do take a little bit longer, but as long as you just have one small tank, I'd say two to three hours a week and you're golden. Question number six, what are the ongoing costs for a saltwater aquarium? Once you've bought everything, all of your equipment and your livestock, really your ongoing costs come down to electricity for running your lights and your pumps and your heaters, food for feeding your fish and your invertebrates, buying salt water for doing water changes, and that's about it. 
electricity, food, salt water. Electricity obviously is gonna depend on where you live, but things have gotten a lot more efficient in this hobby. The biggest pieces of equipment that use electricity somewhat heavily in your tank is gonna be any of your pumps, especially your return pumps, your heater, and your lights. But nowadays, most people use LED lights and they're pretty energy efficient as it is. I'd say the number one largest cost is going to be from doing water changes. If you're just buying salt water from your local fish store, typically they charge a dollar a gallon. You can save a lot of money in the long run by making it yourself, but a lot of beginners just don't have the expense or the time or the knowledge to, to really want to do that. So let's say you just go to your local fish store and you buy that. If you had a tank that's this size right here, this is about 60 gallons overall, and you were to do a 10% water change, you'd be looking at $6 a week to do that. You could probably cut that price in half by making it yourself. Obviously, the larger the tank you have, the more money it's gonna cost. So if you keep your tank small, 15 to 30 gallons, the expenses on a monthly basis with everything are probably gonna be between 20 and $50, depending on your routine. Uh -huh. Question number seven, are corals and saltwater fish expensive? No, and yes, it totally depends on what you buy. Just like in any hobby, there are certain things that are more rare and difficult to come by, and there are certain things that are more collector's item. While you could have a simple coral that you could pick up for a few bucks, you can have one with slightly different colors, that's a few hundred dollars. Me personally, I always just go on the cheaper ends because my eyes really aren't good enough to be able to distinguish between a high end and a low end. So are corals and fish expensive? They don't have to be. I pretty much always go with cheap, inexpensive fish. Yes, you could pay $200 for a fancy clownfish, or you could pay $10. And for me, I think the $10 ones are great. Yes, you could pay $2,000 for a fancy anemone, or you could pick up an inexpensive anemone for $15. Depending on what your tastes are, and if you can stomach getting something that's just not quite as fancy, then the answer would be no. Saltwater fish and corals are not expensive. Question number eight, are corals and saltwater fish difficult to keep? It totally, totally depends. There are species out there that are super hardy and there are ones that are super finicky and it depends on so many factors. Some species ship really well, some don't. Some species need a big aquarium and some can deal with a small aquarium. Some have like a really thick slime coat that makes them more impervious to disease and some seem to just pick up diseases all the time. Some corals are really, really good at different lighting conditions and water parameters and some corals, if one little tiny thing changes, will just bleach out and die. So are corals and fish difficult to keep? They don't have to be. I would recommend as a beginner choosing corals and fish that are known to be beginner friendly. That way you know they're gonna ship well and you know they're gonna be hardy and they're gonna be tolerant of the mistakes you make. Question number nine, how many fish can I put in my saltwater aquarium? Not the easiest to answer. We used to give a one inch of fish per five gallons. And, and, and while that's probably a, a really good idea, that means what, if you have a 20 gallon tank, you can get four one inch fish. And that just oversimplifies things. Because we've made so many advancements in aquarium filtration that, that as long as your water is filtered right, and as long as you're able to take care of all the nutrients you're putting into the tank by exporting them, then you can have a lot more fish. But when you're thinking about how many fish you can add, it's really gonna depend on several factors. Number one, how aggressive is the fish? There are docile fish, semi-aggressive fish, and aggressive fish. And if you put one single aggressive fish in a tank that's 20 gallons, that's probably the only fish you can have. When you could probably go with a whole bunch of more docile community fish 
and put a whole bunch of them in there. Another question to ask is, is, is where does that fish live? If you were to buy four fish that only live at the surface, that's not great. But if you have some fish that like to live at the surface, some fish that like to live more in the rock works, and some fish that like to, to sift the sand or live in the sand bed, then you're putting your livestock at different levels so they'll inhabit different areas of the tank. So how many fish can I put in an aquarium? Let me just give you an example, right? Back here is my 24 gallon tank. It's 18 gallons up top with six gallons of filtration. I have in there a goby, two clownfish, two pajama cardinal fish, a cleaner shrimp, a whole bunch of corals, and a whole bunch of snails and hermit crabs. Fish-wise, I have five fish in there, but the livestock options are really kind of endless once you get the knack of it. Is it better to start out as a beginner with fewer fish? Yes, absolutely, and start out with docile community fish, and then you can kind of go from there to make sure that the fish you're adding are gonna be playing nicely together. If you have your heart set on one specific fish, then do your research and build your entire tank around that so that you know what sort of livestock options are gonna be available with that one specific fish. So how many fish can I put in an aquarium? Totally depends, totally depends. Do your research, have good filtration, and you'll find success. And the 10th question that Max and I get quite frequently is what is the difference between anemones, corals, sponges, and macroalgae. A lot of times people think, hey, what kind of plants can I add to a saltwater aquarium? And most of the time when they're thinking plants, they're actually thinking of corals and anemones. Yes, there are plants you can add and we call those plants macroalgae, different kinds of seaweeds. There's all sorts of beautiful large algae out there. And those, those are plants. They're photosynthetic. They use the light to create their food. They can also benefit from nitrates and phosphates in the water column. But when we're talking about corals and anemones and sponges, those are not plants, those are actually animals. The main difference between a coral and an anemone is corals are stationary, they don't move. Anemones have feet and can move all around your tank. Most corals and anemones are photosynthetic and get 90% of their nutrition from the light, but can also handle supplemental feeding. Although when you get into higher end corals, there are corals out there that are non-photosynthetic and require daily feedings to survive. Well, that's it, week one, we're done. As of now, Max and I have 51 of these beginner blogs and videos planned. So if you don't wanna miss out on any of them, Scroll down, click on myfirstfishtank.com, click the subscribe button to subscribe to our newsletter. If you found this helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to Marine Depot and My First Fish Tank. And if there's someone in your life, a friend or a family member you know who might wanna start a saltwater aquarium, if you'd consider sharing this video with them, we would greatly appreciate it. Well, that's it for week one. We hope to see you guys here next week for week two of the 51 week ultimate beginner series, whatever we're gonna call it, which we haven't figured out a name yet. We'll see you next week, everybody. Be well, happy reefing.